Welcome to JNUC 2020. This session is brought to you by Second Life Mac. This is the five lessons from 2020 for IT directors and asset managers. I'm going to pause a moment and let you take a look at the forward looking statement disclaimer. Thank you. Boy, 2020 has been one for the record books, and most of us are ready to start afresh. But this year has had some great lessons for IT directors and uh, opportunities to really strengthen their technology environments. Join us as we take a look at the top five lessons schools and businesses can learn from the year 2020. After all, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So in our session, we're gonna be discussing the five lessons IT professionals and asset managers in both education and the enterprise can take away from the challenges of 2020. If you're like me, you're looking for a positive, a learning opportunity to pull from this year. It's been a rough year for both schools and businesses. Uh, trying to manage the technology needs of remote workers and distance learners. It's also been a year of lessons. You've been in, pulled in directions you probably never thought possible. You really are the unsung heroes in this pandemic and our schools and our businesses are forever grateful. I'm Craig Melisari and I'm the Director of Procurement for Second Life Mac. And I'm joined today by my partner, Ryan Egan, our Director of Enterprise. Second Life Mac buys used Apple devices in schools and in businesses, helping organizations tap the residual value from their technology investment and to launch a sustainable device lifecycle roadmap. Since 2015, we've been disrupting the buyback industry, coupling the best Apple lifecycle expertise with unprecedented customer service, start to finish custody of devices, and the most transparent process in the industry. Stemming from the unprecedented needs during the COVID-19 pandemic, Second Life Mac developed and trademarked the only touchless trade-in program in our industry. And we'll look more at that a little bit later in the presentation. A little bit about my background. Before joining Second Life Mac, I was with Apple Education for five years. At Apple, I was an account executive within the K-12 education realm. And I worked with K-12 CTOs, district leadership, and school boards throughout California and the West region to design and meet technology needs including one-to-one -one iPad and MacBook initiatives, as well as detailed total cost of ownership analysis. Ryan, how about you? Hey, Craig, thanks for getting us kicked off. Hi, I'm Ryan Egan, Director of Enterprise for Second Life Mac. I work with businesses to provide creative IT asset disposition solutions that include the sellback of used Apple equipment. And like Craig, I'm also an Apple veteran I spent nearly seven years at Apple helping organizations manage their technology assets throughout ANZ, EMEA, and North America. So let's go ahead and dive into the two lessons we learned for businesses this year. The first lesson we learned is that the job of IT directors and asset managers just got a whole lot more complicated and difficult. In March, when companies moved to 100% distributed work environments, overnight they went from managing devices in one or several locations to managing devices in thousands of locations, perhaps globally. That was incredibly challenging. So uh, just a quick hats off to all of you who navigated through those circumstances. Well done. And we do know that remote work is probably here to stay. We have some recent surveys that tell us that 70% of venture backed companies plan to allow all or some of their employees to continue remote work even after the pandemic is over. We also see that 80% of employees working remotely would like to do so, continue on to do so in some capacity, while 58% would like to work remotely on a permanent basis. And in this environment, unfortunately, buyback providers haven't been able to provide to meet the needs of global enterprises and, and we're not ready to meet the needs of companies with employees scattered all over the globe. What's needed is an automated way to take back an employee device from any location in a way that is secure, safe, and transparent. And at Second Life Mac, we've developed and are launching a new service that does just this. So of course we wanna tell you about it. Once enrolled in our service, 
you would have access to a portal. And from the portal, you can send a prepaid postage box and label directly to your remote employee. And this is where it gets pretty neat. When the label is scanned by the carrier, it triggers the MDM, your Jamf, for example, to automatically wipe device data, device data, ensuring a secure ship. The shipment is then visible to asset managers in the portal where they can see real time global chain of custody utilizing blockchain. We also provide a user friendly, thank you, user friendly dashboard for tracking all units throughout each step of the sell back process with visibility to data points such as total value recovered, number of devices processed, and even how many are still in transit. And last, and certainly not least, we're providing virtual access to view and download data certification, uh, destruction certifications. This was an absolute priority for our company, and I know it's a priority for yours. So although your job has gotten more complicated, we are simplifying the device sellback process. Now on to lesson number two. Companies are not maximizing the value of their Apple devices. The move to remote work environments made it clear that many companies lack a strategy to provide employees the tools they need and to keep those tools updated. And many employers weren't prepared to transition from a central work location to working from home. Some of those examples include legacy devices not being able to support the simplest or most basic security protocols, and also not having the processing power to run multiple programs, uh, proprietary software along with VPN, and, and the, uh, the ever popular, which we all got a little too comfortable with, I think, uh, video conferencing. So we know that legacy devices are just not a great solution for working from home. Also, IT departments tasked with supporting and fixing employee devices had to figure out how to get those devices back without compromising company data or their employees' data. And that was really challenging. And lastly, having so many employees at the, all at the same time transition from desktops to mobile devices created never before seen demand and procurement for those mobile devices became a huge challenge for many institutions. This was especially true in the first two to three months of the pandemic. To solve these issues, asset managers need to develop a strategic process for regularly refreshing their devices. So their technology is updated and works. And as your partner, we'll be providing the data-driven tools to help you plan device life cycles. And that will include the, the visibility to current market values, future and forecast market values, and also some visibility to unsupported software for your device. And we believe this is the kind of data that will help you figure out the, the perfect time to upgrade and refresh your fleets of Apple equipment. So with that, I wanna thank you so much for your time. I'm gonna now pass it back to Craig so he can give you three lessons that we learned in education. Have a great conference. Thanks, Ryan, great job. Education and enterprise share many similar challenges and learnings, but education in and of itself does have some very unique elements which present three more key learnings. Learning number three, takeaway from our presentation, every student needs a device. Well, I'll tell you, if this year change in learning has taught us anything, it's that every student needs a device. COVID demonstrated the need for one-to-one -one programs throughout K-12 in all schools so that every student and teacher had access to a digital distance learning tool. And even during non-pandemic times, schools may need and will need to suspend in-person learning for a number of different reasons. Illness outbreak, weather emergencies, wildfires and floods, uh, natural disasters, building system failures. But I can tell you uh, firsthand, my time at Apple, I saw several occasions where K-12 districts in California, Colorado, Nevada, and throughout the Western territories had to deal swiftly with devastating wildfires that leveled homes and schools alike. Over the years, education IT teams learned to adapt and strategically align technology services with the needs of students and teachers who could not make it into the classroom 
one-to-one -one device implementation was a critical element for immediate and long-term success. That coupled with the fact that studies have shown one-to-one -one programs enhance student learning opportunities. So let's take a look at a uh, district that was well prepared when the pandemic played out and what the differences might be. So Pulaski Community School District in Wisconsin, they have an iPad one-to-one -one in grades K through 12. Schools closed in March, like many of yours, because of the pandemic. Digital learning directors were able to quickly mobilize and distribute 3,700 student devices and over 350 faculty and teacher devices in just three days. Think about that. <clears throat> devices implemented, deployed, and digital learning up and running in just three days. And they were able to do this because they had one-to-one -one iPads in their grades K through 12 already. Teachers and students were both used to digital learning, so they didn't miss a beat. Pulaski had the curriculum, they had the resources, they had the devices, and a tested workflow to stage, deploy, and working with Jamf, manage over 3,500 take-home devices. Pulaski found themselves far ahead of neighboring districts who are still scrambling to procure devices and to implement a distance learning plan. Our number four presentation takeaway is that devices should be refreshed on a regular schedule, plain and simple. Many schools use equipment until it fails and then rush to go replace it. And that's been the tradition, that's been the norm. There are many reasons why this is not a good idea and should in fact change as times change. Let's go through those reasons. Teaching is far more difficult on old technology. Your teachers right now are expecting your existing devices to be used to a degree that they may never have before. And frankly, vintage and obsolete iPads or MacBooks simply can't keep up. Software stops working. In many cases, you can't download the latest iOS or Mac OS it simply won't work on your older devices. Your MDM won't support older devices. Jamf has a published list of older Apple devices that cannot be managed to an optimal level, taking away from user experience. Probably the one that stands out in this list most and has the most impact are the students. Students miss out on educational content when using outdated device. Landing pages aren't working properly. Digital backpacks, which have become the norm, aren't operating correctly. Teachers and students are not having access to all the robust content available from Google Apps for Education and Apple Classroom. In many states, testing platforms are phased out with older devices, leaving you without an opportunity for a mobile device testing platform. This all then falls on IT. IT becomes burdened with repair and troubleshooting. You become the fix-it department. High cost, lower ROI. We saw this over and over in 2020. Some schools were caught flat footed. <clears throat> By the time they decided to refresh, the supply chain was so tight, you couldn't get new devices. Ask yourself, think now, how long are you expecting to wait for your new Apple devices? 10 to 12 weeks is the current normal interval. This pandemic has caused supply chain interruption and a regular refresh schedule would have allowed IT directors and their teams, coupled with Apple education reps and sell back partners such as Second Life Mac to anticipate pandemic supply chain issues and place equipment orders early and or plan for device sell back before it was too late. Again, the pandemic has caused supply chain interruptions and a regular refresh would have solved all of these issues. Software would be able to be up to date. Devices are functioning at the high level that they're asked to right now. Supply chain problems are anticipated and planned for, making many of these unforeseen challenges merely a blip on the radar screen. Timing is also important and timing brings us to our fifth learning timing of the refresh for a higher payout. 
So the best time to refresh, when is that? Well, our experience has shown that the best time to refresh is just at the beginning of iPads or MacBooks beginning to lose their teaching value. That's when the residual is still high. Around year three for an iPad, around year four to five for a MacBook. Many schools refresh in the summer. Summer refreshes are very popular. And that's because it gives IT directors time to collect devices from students and turn them over to the sellback partner, such as Second Life Mac. Well, in 2020, we saw that this may not be uh, uh, this may not be possible. In fact, it creates a larger um, and heavier stress on an already dry supply chain. Planning refreshes in the middle of the year. Mid-year refresh are far more lucrative. And partnering with a solid buyback company and Jamf makes this mid-year refresh faster, easier, and should be part of your ongoing technology plan. The biggest benefit really of mid-year refreshes are one, lesser supply chain impact, and two, and probably most impactful to your budget, mid-year refresh can net schools far more money than it would at the end, at, in the summertime. In fact, studies have shown that mid-year refresh can net schools 12% more on their devices going back into your technology budget. In fact, if you look at that, a fleet of 2,000 iPads um, will net you back with a mid-year refresh over $34,000. Again, going back into your technology budget, which could ultimately buy you and your students another 115 iPads. On a fleet of 2,000 iPads, you can, you can procure and deploy devices in about one week time, partnering with a sellback company as well as Jamf. And those numbers could be faster given the number of staff that you have on hand. So let's summarize. The pandemic has created a lot of uncertainty in our business and something that we'll need to prepare for moving forward, businesses and schools. It's more important than ever to uh, have a solid sellback partner who understands these challenges and goes the extra mile for you, who anticipates supply chain issues and can help create creative solutions within your sell back plan. I spoke earlier about the trademarked touchless trade-in program brought to you by Second Life Mac. I'd like to leave you with a video of Kanawha County Schools in Charleston, West Virginia. Kanawha regularly refreshes devices, but that schedule became challenged when the COVID shut down schools in the, in, within the district, just as it did with yours. Administrators wondered how they could possibly uh, safely take back devices from students who were no longer on campus and also had a strained staff on hand. While working with Second Life Mac and our touchless device trade-in program, we were able to make that happen. I have a video to share now. Let's take a look at how that happened. We never really thought that we would be in the situation of a pandemic. It was time for the reality of, we may not be going back to school. So what is the plan? How are we going to do this refresh with 16,000 devices and 16,000 students and do it safely and efficiently? We developed a touchless pickup that has conveyor belts, it has QR codes. It is unknown and unprecedented in the country or in this industry that anybody has what you're seeing here today. As you can see, there's lots of cars coming in behind me. We're prepared, we're organized, we're running multiple lanes, and we're getting people in and getting them out quickly. The first tent, they took her lunch number and name. And then they wrote down everything and put it on my windshield. The second station drop off old charger, block, and iPad. And then the clean ones were handed directly to us straight from the box. Here you go, here's your new one. I got a new iPad at the end, no scratches, all pretty and clean, I'm pretty excited. 
my staff has absolutely just stepped up to the plate and they are amazing. I could not ask for a better group of people that are willing to come on their day off. They are just so committed and dedicated to this and to our students and it's just phenomenal to see. I can't thank them enough. There's a lot of buyback companies out there because we know K through 12 and we know Apple and we've been there and we've sold it to schools before, we understand exactly what they need and they have to have that buyback work for their schools. They have to have the buyback be exactly what they say it's going to be. Have a guarantee. Make sure that you have a touchless pickup. Make sure that you are watching the market. We take that type of work off their shoulders and say, hey, we've done that here at Second Life Mac already. The partnership has been really beneficial to us. We've had numerous calls and discussions. We've been able to really work together to problem solve, to think forward, to figure out what is the best way we can do this. We put together a plan, we executed the plan, and it's working beautifully. Technology has evolved throughout the years and it's become a must in our classrooms. Teachers need to feel supported in order to take risks to use the technology and that's the culture we want to set here. You make me so it's quick. That's wonderful. It was about as efficient as one could imagine. Better than I expected. No. It was easy. Uh, it was just like your old one. Thank you. If there's any issue with that video or you'd like a copy for yourself, please contact us through secondlifemac.com and it will be playing in, the, in our booth. Ryan and I would like to thank you for your time today. Please give us feedback by completing the survey in the widget below. And we're also happy to answer, answer I'm sorry, any questions you may have uh, by entering it in the box at the bottom of your screen. Again, enjoy JNook 2020. If you haven't already done so, Please visit our booth, Second Life Mac. Thank you, and have a great rest of your year.